How's it going? These are web dev terms every organization should know before venturing into the land of website development. My name is George Weiner. I'm the chief whaler of Whole Whale. This is Moby. No particular reason he's here. We've all talked to a website developer uh, who suddenly burst out a term like, we got to make sure the CSS and 301 read whatever. The conversation ends and you think, well, what did they just say? Chances are, if you Google it, you get a lot of text speak. Fear not. We've put together some of the most commonly used words, acronyms, and phrases that come up when working with a developer, along with our definitions for them. Let's review the top terms to know. 404, error message. When you know you get a bad request from a website that cannot be found, often because the link requested is either dead or broken, 404 is the uh, terminology for that. API, application program interface. Basically how computers and applications and database communicate with one another. Kind of like, you know, Morse code or something. Back end. All of the behind the scenes digital operations that it takes to keep the front end of a website, the part you see running, such as, you know, the coding, the style, the plugins. If the front end of your website is what the audience sees on stage, the back end encompasses the stage hands, the makeup artists, the costume, the tech crew, the stage manager, Managers simultaneously running the show from backstage. Browser. The browser, uh, you know what? The program you use to access the web. You're probably watching me on one right now, such as Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Brave Browser, you name it. When you experience an issue with a website, it's best to send the browser type and version you are using to your developer, as oftentimes these issues are browser specific. You can figure out this exactly thanks to whatsmybrowser.org. Bug, an error or flaw in the website or app that keeps it from running as expected. Classes in CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, is an identifier for specifying exactly what you want to target with styling. In other programming language, classes are a bit more broadly used as the blueprint for creating something similar to using the blueprint of an existing car to create a new type of car. CMS, Content Management System, super popular term. The program that you use to create and maintain your website's content. These are usually designed for non-developers, for ease of use or author experience, where people can easily make new pages in your site. Our personal favorite, at Whole Whale is WordPress. Cookies, the source of all that is good and chocolatey and... Cho no, wait a minute, that's the wrong script. Kidding. Look, this is the data sent by an internet server to a browser. Each time the browser accesses the same server, it sends the data back. And it's a means of tracking how and how often it accesses the server. This is why your home computer always knows the Netflix login or New York Times login. Front end. This is the part of the website or app that the user sees. If the back end of your website is everything behind the scenes, this is what happens on the stage you are watching. HTML, hypertext markup language, the coding language used to build a website in terms of both form and function read by a browser. Meta tag, additional information on websites and pages or elements such as the way a piece of content should display in Google search results, photo credit for an image or the main keywords associated with a plugin. This is a huge one for SEO, search engine optimization. We recommend the Yoast plugin if you're using WordPress for adding all of the necessary meta information to set up your site for SEO success. Navigation, links on a homepage that break down the other pages of a website. This can be both uh, in the menu at the top of a site or be in the footer or preferably both. Page template. This is the layout for a web page. Pages that have similar structures share the same template, you know, such as a, an event details page uh, or a variety of events on the same website. Pages that are radically different use separate templates. So when you're designing your site, you think about the different templates you want, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, obviously. Plugin, modules or software that can be added, plugged in to a system for added functionality or features. We just mentioned the Yoast plugin for WordPress, for instance. Property, these are characteristics that are dictated by CSS, such as color schemes or fonts, the property of an H1, for instance. Redirects, automatic forwards from one URL to another, usually from an old website URL to the same page on the new website. These are called 301 redirects. Other redirects may pivot between two domains, you know, like 
let's say idealist.com redirects to idealist.org, or a shortened URL to the full URL, i.e. like bit.ly links that send you to longer websites and geo-targeted URLs. Responsive design, websites that accommodate the screen on which they're being viewed. This became huge, huge trend in website design when browsing on mobile devices and tablet devices became more popular, which has led many developers to opt for a mobile-first approach, optimizing a website design for phone and tablet use first and then making sure it looks good on a laptop or desktop. Server, computers running software that you know allows users to access your website. This is what houses the hosting. If your domain is the website's mailing address and hosting is the house, well, the server is the land it's built on. Site map, it's an outline of all the pages on a website organized in a hierarchical order, you know, much like the outlines you use to for your college term papers, then submitted to you know the Google Search Console. UI, user interface, the visual elements that go into a website or app. This is you know the the form to UX's function, user experiences function. UX, user experience, a user's interaction with an interface with a focus on how satisfying and successful the experience is. The function to complete UI's form, form, function, form, function, UX, IX. Widgets, applications that allow for specific interactive functions to be formed on a website. Wireframe, the bare bones, bare bones structure of a website. No fonts, no colors, no images. This is a layout that is the first step to making sure that the foundation is sound before the content and design are added. WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. Don't you love these acronyms? It's a visual content editor within a CMS content management system that allows you to modify content on your website without needing to know HTML. Look, if you've ever made text in a website bold just by highlighting it and clicking bold, you were using a WYSIWYG. Whew, well, don't worry, uh, we've defined a lot more 20 plus other important dev firms uh, in our complete website glossary. Find the link in our comments. In general, when working with a developer, it's important to cross this language barrier with basic understanding of these terms. And you know what? There was a first time in which I heard WYSIWYG. There's a first time in which I heard a 301 redirect and I had to figure out the answer. Don't be afraid of finding that answer out because it's much worse to get to the end of a web project and be like, wait a minute, Where's this entire piece of functionality I thought was supposed to be built? And the developer says, well, you didn't, you didn't use the jargon. So hopefully this helps get you started so that you know what you're asking for and what is being said back. Thanks for watching Whole Whale TV. More episodes like this episode right there. And by the way, you can subscribe so you get all the newest videos that we were releasing regularly.